everybody, it's Disney Queen Skelly here. Welcome to another Fun Facts video. Uh, so today's Fun Facts are going to be for the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland. Um, today was supposed to be Donald Duck's Chef Donald, but again, when I can't find Fun Facts on a certain video, I replace it with the Disneyland attraction. Um, so I hope you enjoy these Fun Facts on Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland. Again, once again, I'm so sorry if you can hear my fan. It's just really hot in here and we opened up a window so we're just trying to get some cool airflow in here. It was originally meant to be a wax museum before the Imagineers of WED Enterprises created an attraction that would drop guests down waterfalls into the swashbuckling world of pirates. Walt Disney brought a simple idea forward, Pirates of the Caribbean. It was up to a team of Imagineers to decide what those four words meant. One of Walt's original ideas was for a walkthrough wax museum attraction. Then Disney legend Mark Davis evolved the idea into a more interactive walkthrough where guests would experience about six different vignettes, each depicting a short story. Of course, both of these ideas were revised to become the seafaring adventure we know today after an innovative new ride system was developed for the 1964-65 to New York World's Fair. It was Imagineer X Atencio who penned Yo-Ho! A Pirate's Life for Me. Animator and later Disney legend Xavier X. Atencio made the transition over to Imagineering in 1965, leaving his fingerprints on iconic attractions such as Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Some of his most recognizable handwork, however, is not something you see, but something you hear. The Disney legend penned two of the most iconic park songs, Grim Grinning Ghost and Yo-Ho! A Pirate's Life for Me. X had never penned a song or tune before approaching Walt with ideas for lyrics to accompany their latest pirate-themed attraction. He also provided the voice of the attraction's an ominous Jolly Roger skull and crossbones. Atencio turned to Disney's Treasure Island for inspiration. Early in the development for the attraction, Walt asked X to join the Imagineering team in developing their newest attraction. X knew he had to fully immerse himself into pirate culture. So he turned to where most of us do when looking for inspiration, movies. Specifically, he found that spark from Disney's 1950 live action hit, Treasure Island. At 15 minutes, it is the longest attraction at Disneyland. During the 15 minute boat ride, guests travel 1,838 feet through two huge structures. At its opening, the show featured 119 life-size three-dimensional figures, 64 humans, and 55 animals. Sculptor Blaine Gibson had to revise his designs when they were recognized as employees. Sculptor Blaine Gibson had a habit of people watching in search of inspiration for the physical appearance of characters he created for a host of Disney attractions. While this was a great source for material, his wife scolded him to stop staring at people in public, and the habit eventually caught up to him. He had to change a nose on one of the pirates' faces when a fellow employee mentioned that it looked like a man from another Disney department. Paul Fries, or as you may know him, your ghost host, voiced several characters. Fans will recognize the work of famed voice actor and Disney legend Paul Fries as the voice of Ludwig von Drake and for belting the dreadful Haunted Mansion greeting, Welcome Foolish Mortals. But he also lends his voice to another of the most iconic phrases in the park, Dead Men Tell No Tales. Anyways, those are your fun facts for Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, next fun fact video will be for Mickey Mouse, the little whirlwind. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye, little skeletons. Stay safe. Love you guys.